Hey everybody, Mike here with everything about Concrete.com. In this video, we're going to talk about how two men kick screen using a 14 foot straight edge. I'm going to show you how we do that. A lot of you guys have reached out to me and want to see more about kick screening and learn more about kick screening and how we do it. So that's kind of what this video is about. The first thing we got to do is we got to get some concrete on the ground. Well, if you guys don't know me, my name is Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors Incorporated. Uh, we specialize in concrete floors and concrete slabs and stamp concrete, uh, all kinds of concrete repair, stuff like that. So if you like that kind of stuff, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now so you'll be updated on all my videos. I come out with about two a week. And uh, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. So we're getting this concrete poured out. This is a four inch thick concrete floor. This is a 3000 PSI concrete. Um, I'm magging the edges right now. Darren and Luke are spreading the creed around. As you can see, we actually, right in front there, we actually do have a viber screed sitting there, but we're not going to use it. We, uh, we decided just to kick screed this one. I actually don't even use that viber screed anymore. We got a new one. Make sure you stick around for the end of the video so you can see the new viber screed we got and how that works, how much easier that is than kick screeding. So that's coming up at the end of the video here. So what I'm doing now is I'm just striking my pads. I got a wet pad I made out there in the middle. And then I'm striking that even with the pad on the wall there that I magged. We're just matching the top of the concrete wall on this, this addition to this building. This was about a 1,400 square foot concrete floor. It's going to take a couple trucks. We usually like dumping, when we have two trucks like this, we usually like dumping the first truck right out and getting them out of there before we start doing any straight edging. See, I'm shooting my grades with the laser and my grade stick, making sure that everything's nice and level. I use that Topcon RL5B laser for my shooting all my grades. That'll be down in the description, guys, if you want to check that out. I think that's the best laser for pouring concrete. So here we are, kick screen. Two guys on a 14-foot straight edge. And you can see how they're slightly tipping the straight edge backwards, so they're, they're running it on the back edge, and they're not digging in with the front edge. And as they're moving backwards, they're just slightly kicking a little bit in where, where they pull their feet out. So they pull their foot out, and they kick a little bit of concrete in to, to fill that hole. And they just pull the screed about the same length. And that's how easy it is right there, guys. It's really, it's really pretty easy once you get the hang of it. You don't really need to, to do it with just one guy. I mean, two guys, two guys is pretty fast, pretty easy with this. And one guy just raking. Now we're going around a pipe right there. So we come up to it and set over it. And then we... Got a mag around the pipe to make sure it's nice and flat right around the pipe. I guess I was kind of high in there and I'm pulling quite a bit back. So that's the first bay we get all straight edged. We're, you know, just about got half, three quarters of that first truck all straight edged. Now we're striking another pad. We've always wet screeded stuff. We never use, we've never used any type of pipes or or uh, floats or anything in the middle to screed off from. We just we've always been taught off of wet pads like this. This is pretty accurate. I mean, if you go back and shoot this floor with a laser after we get done power tiling it, it's all going to be within an eighth of an inch. And that's about as accurate as you can get. Around the bolt load over that, get it smoothed out. We're over there, over there to the right. We're in there pouring around all those pipes. It's a bathroom over there. We we'll use a little bit smaller straight edge in there. All right, so we're on to the second truck. We, we, you know, when we pour floors like this, we were hired by a general contractor. And the general contractor just hires us to pour and finish the concrete. We don't do really the prep. So, I mean, they kind of dictate 
if there's any wire or rebar going in, or if they're just going to use fiber mesh in the concrete, which is what they're doing on this one. I mean, a lot of times we'll lay the, the poly vapor barrier when we get there, but that's about it. Inside a frost wall like this, you know, I mean, it's not going to go anywhere. The building's always going to be heated. So, as long as the sub base is compacted really good, that fiber mesh is all you really need. We're going to saw our expansion joints in this too, so if it does want to crack, it's going to crack in those expansion joints we saw. So here we are striking the pad again. We like our pads a couple feet wide. Now Luke's going to go up there and he's going to straight edge off that first truck. And I'm on the outside of the pad. Make sure he's got enough concrete up there. He doesn't want any low spots. So what I'm doing, when I'm on the outside like this, and there's two of us, I'm trying to make his job as easy as it can, because being on the inside is a little harder than being on the outside of the pad. So I'm going to try to match his speed and match whatever stroke he pulls, and just help him keep it on the back edge as I, as I ride that pad down. You can see how easy it is for me. I'm just using one hand. He's really doing most of the work. I don't know if you can see it up on the end of his straight edge, the very end of it. He's leaving like a tiny little line on the end, on the surface of the concrete. That tells him that he's scoring and that he's perfectly flat. If he doesn't leave that line, that means he's riding a little high and he's going to leave a hump in the floor. And if he's digging in too much, you know, if he digs in more than, say, an eighth of an inch, then he's creating a dip in the floor. So. It's important just to leave that nice, nice even line as you're straight edging down, something like that. So there we are, we're gonna finish up that bay. And now what Darren's gonna do is he's gonna go up there with a seven foot straight edge and kick screed with a seven foot straight edge and show you how fast and easy that is. Now I see some guys on, on YouTube, you, you know, screeding by themselves, doing the whole floor by themselves, and I just don't see how that's faster or easier than doing it with two guys on a, on a longer rod. And when they are doing it by themselves, they're not kick screeding like Darren just did. They're kind of moving it back and forth, and then they'll set back, and they'll move it back and forth again. That's just, I guess, it, I mean, they get the job done. It just seems harder, it seems slower. Obviously, they just weren't taught to kick screed like we were. I know it's a whole different process, but I mean, if you watch a few of these videos and you watch some guys like us kick screed, you should be able to pick it up pretty good if, if you're in the business. The important thing is when you're kick screeding is that you're not low. You want the concrete to be a little bit high behind you. So you're always pulling some back and you don't have to stop. And you can see those guys, they move their feet back and they kick a little back into the hole. Move them back, kick a little bit into the hole. The guy that's puddling and the guy that's raking me, I'm trying to match their stroke too. I'm, I'm pushing concrete up as they move the straight edge back. And I'm pulling concrete as they're pulling the straight edge back. So I'm, I don't want to do the opposite and push concrete while they're pulling it back because then it'll kind of splatter. Make sure all Darren's footholes are still filled in there. So that first truck was setting up pretty good. So straight edging off that first truck's a little bit harder than straight edging off the new concrete here. Yeah, we got this thing almost all straight edge now. On wide open areas like this, we mostly use a 14 foot straight edge. I mean, it's just, for us it's easier. You, you, they even make 16s or 20s, I guess, but 14's pretty good. You're gonna see in a minute here what we're using now to screed with. We still do, we still hand screed quite a bit. But now this is, 
this is what we're doing now. Marshalltown has, uh, has got a really good Viber speed. I've used a lot of Viber speeds over the last 39 years. But this one, this one's like a Cadillac. Man. This one runs really nice. It's pretty light. The throttle's nice. The vibration's really, really pretty, pretty easily nice. And uh, it just kind of floats over the surface and levels everything. He is having a couple good rapers behind him, you know, making sure the concrete's right where it needs to be. But that's how we're doing it now, guys. Just like that. So again, we're going to bolt float this and finish it up. But that's how two men screed using a 14-foot straight edge. You know, we call it kick screeding. You guys want to learn how to do that, just keep watching the videos.